Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Boomi World 2018. Brought to you by Dell Boomi. Welcome back to theCUBE's continuing coverage of the second annual Boomi World 2018 from Las Vegas. I'm Lisa Martin with John Furrier. And we're welcoming to theCUBE for the first time the Chief Operating Officer and Chief Customer Officer, Chris Port. Chris, thanks so much for joining us on the program today. Thank you for having me. So, second annual Boomi World, over a thousand people here. This, the keynote was streaming in what, 17 countries? Yes, This yes, morning. exciting. Big impact, 7,500 customers. You also said, Dell Boomi, we're adding five new customers every day. Yes. You have this opportunity to get your customers together with press and analysts and your partner ecosystem. Talk to us about some of the, the strong messages that have come out from Del Boomi in the last couple of days about your technology partner program, how you're redefining iPads. Yes. Yeah, look, I, I think it's about, you know, the leadership that we've talked about, you know, effectively since there was a Gartner Magic Quadrant from our space, we've been in the leader quadrant. So, incredibly excited about that. But, but the goal is how do we become a leader for the next 10, 20, 30 years? And I think that's, the, the, this week is, is not just the start, it's a continuation of that. So we talked about the new technology partner program, which to me is just the continued evolution. We've always had a partner program, but it's just continuing on that journey and really starting to explore ways for partners to now start to build solutions on top of Boomi that they can then take to market, that we support. Obviously leveraging Boomi's technology, but then building on our platform. I think we're talking about exploring and expanding our GSI and SI capabilities. So that force multiplier, like Chris talked about, we have a great you know, group of Boomi team members, but we know that those SIs and GSIs provide that force multiplier. We've also launched new services around enterprise innovation and enterprise architecture. We listen to this as 100% customer driven. Customers talk to us, they love professional services from us, but they love to see it in a much more predictable, provided deliverables in a subscription model. So we launched that this week. And then Steve Wood's going to talk tomorrow about a multitude of things from a product perspective that we feel are really kind of, this is where the iPass 2.0, as Chris called it, tomorrow is the start of that. And I think you guys will see that journey. There's a lot of challenges in this marketplace with cloud native and on-premise legacy applications that have great value as they get modernized in sure. the cloud. You guys are born in the cloud. Everything that's, that Boomi has done since the startup days has been cloud native. Um, so that's an interesting perspective, so that's going to be helpful for as you guys take the customers to the next level. But this connected business market that's developing is complicated. You got smart contracts around the corner with blockchain. You got integrating multiple in developer environments, multiple tool chains. Sure. Just on and on, a lot of complexity. And what IT leaders want is less complexity. Yes. So they don't want more complexity to solve more complexity. So this is, a, this is the, 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 the struggle. Um, how do you guys talk to customers who come to you and say, look, I got complexity, I want to simplify it, but I still want to scale. Absolutely. I want to do these things, I want to be prepared for blockchain, I want to be prepared for yep. the next yep. level of business. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I, mean I, would, I would say a couple things. I think, first off, we're, we're agnostic in terms of on-prem versus cloud from an application perspective. Um, our predominant use case is, is, a, is a SaaS-based application that's in the cloud and an on-premise application. So, so I think you know, 7,500 customers, the 10 billion minutes of experience we talked about, that experience spans both on-prem and cloud. So I think we have a really unique opportunity to, to see and live in both universes. Um, the architecture is 100% cloud native, which gives us fundamental advantages. Now, in terms of what you talk about, in terms of the simplification, you know, that's what everybody's striving for. Yeah. Uh, they want to reduce the tool sets. Um, and again, I think that's the power of the platform. That's, Steve Wood talks about it, drop the mic, we're the best at integration, low code, high productivity, it's where we were born, it's, it's what we built the back of the company on. But that said, over the last five to seven years, we've built the true platform around that core capability to now encompass you know, master data management with Hub, API with Mediate, EDI with Exchange, you know, and ultimately Flow that kind of brings everything together from that workflow, low-code app piece. So foundationally, congratulations by the way, it's a good yeah. job, but that's just the foundation. Absolutely. You guys talked about the keynote today, Michael Dell kind of hit it hard with the scale in the data tsunami with AI. Yes. As IOT's right around the corner, or here with Edge, 
whole new processes are developing. Absolutely. That not necessarily are predictable. Sometimes architecture might change overnight. This is kind of the next boomy wave that we're seeing you guys set up for. How are you guys building that out? What are the key business model components? You mentioned um, your community and you have now an ecosystem that's, that's yep. developed and yep. growing. How are you guys looking at configuring the business to build on the foundation and not skip a beat? Yeah, I mean, I, I think when you start talking about kind of the tsunami of data, as you put it, or the Michael put it this morning, you, you know, when you think about Boomi and how lightweight the Atom architecture is, it creates this really incredibly fast way to create that data fabric. The, the data fabric ultimately is what will drive AI. It's being able to aggregate and see that and then ultimately put it into AI engines, you know, as we call it, the fuel, or, or Michael or someone coined it this morning, the fuel. And, and I think our architecture, and again, this is where being cloud native that you talked yeah. about, this is our profound differentiation. This is why we have the advantage in that space. It's up to us to take advantage of it. But, but I think first off, it's that lightweight architecture that will allow us to really work within customers to create that data fabric that then drives AI, drives it into their organizations. We just heard from the panel that Mandy was on and Blue Green and the Chief Security Officer, Chief Privacy Officer from Dell. And again, everybody's talking about AI and how and about data and data privacy, but, but Boomi's in a unique place to kind of create that data fabric. Um, I think the second one is being able to deploy AI into our own product and into our own community. And, and talking about staying ahead of the curve, that's paramount, that's our fundamental, in my opinion, that's the fundamental differentiator, it's the moat that we have today. You know, because we are single instance multi-tenant. So people will talk about the number of customers they have, but, but, but all, all of ours live on one instance of Boomi. So, so that 30 terabytes of anonymous metadata, that's all on one instance. So we see that it's our opportunity, and you see it was suggest and assure, and some of the things we pioneered in AI, it's our opportunity to take advantage of that with the future things, and, and Steve Wood will start talking about that tomorrow. I'm excited of how we deploy AI in our community mm -hmm. and our support to, in a much more proactive way, help our customers solve problems and opportunities that they have every day. Michael Dell has talked numerous times on theCUBE and even, again, today and in the keynote that companies need to express their competitive differentiation with their data. Mm -hmm. Enterprises that has mostly been the sweet spot for Dell Boomi, large organizations not born in the cloud, many of them, have a huge advantage of having a ton of data. Yeah. You guys are a great example of how you are also using is almost 30 terabytes of anonymous metadata to tune, and that's, that's too soft of a word, to really sure. um, empower the platform, so you're an example of really kind of transforming using what you're saying is what companies need to differentiate. How, when you're in customer conversations as the chief customer officer, how often does sort of that boomy on boomy transformation story come up and, and help customers get a, you know, even more trust in the brand? That's a great question. Um, you know, I think it comes up more and more, and I would say it's Boomi on Boomi, but it's Boomi on Dell Technologies as well. Um, because Michael talked about it, you know, Boomi, you know, Dell went on this, this acquisition binge. Um, and if you go, go look at it, it started roughly nine, 10 years ago. And, um, and, and, and Boomi was literally the second, if you go look at kind of the, the, the assets that, that they purchased, Boomi was the second, and it was about 12 months after the first acquisition. Um, and you know, everybody's learning about what it can do, and they're like, wait a minute, we, we acquired this other company 12 months ago and we're still trying to figure out simply how to make the two instances of Salesforce talk so that sales makers can just share leads and understand what they're doing in each other's accounts. And we're like, well, that's kind of what Boomi does. Uh, and, and within six weeks, that problem was solved for that acquisition and obviously the Boomi acquisition, and then kind of carried that on. So, so you use your own technology to solve the internal exactly. problem. Exactly, you drink your own champagne, yeah. you know, and, um, and, and that's just become more and more. I mean, we have a multitude of people from Dell Technologies IT mm -hmm. here this week talking at some of the breakouts in terms of how they leverage it. They're now leveraging that, they're now leveraging flow for different opportunities. Um, you know, Dell's got one of the largest service cloud deployments in the world happening. A lot of that will be powered by Boomi. Um, 
And so those conversations come up all the time within customers. I think the Boomi on Boomi, I think the onboarding app will yeah. certainly give us an opportunity to talk more and more about that. Obviously, you know, our application stack, you know, underneath the covers is integrated by Boomi. Um, so, so it absolutely comes up, but I think we're, we're kind of at this inflection point in yeah. terms of these discussions where I would tell you they come up you know, in a step function way more today than they did when I kind of came back to Boomi three years ago. You know, Chris, I got to get your perspective. You made me think of some uh, question you mentioned the um, internal. Amazon had the same mm -hmm. challenge with AWS. They solved their internal problems, yep. and then the rest is history. Dell has an interesting um, architecture now, and look, if you look back at the history of Dell, I know you look at how it was built out. Michael has been very successful in merging in as an equal with EMC. The acquisitions that came in, tuck-ins and some in storage yep. all over the place. You guys have a culture of acting like a startup and the founder on stage is like, I'm jazzed, I'm going to go the next 30 years. I'm like, that's 85, I'll be like, <laughs> okay. So this is a culture of startups. How does Boomi keep that startup edge? Because yeah. they were really SaaS first early yeah. on. Yeah. How does that maintain the culture? And now the power of Dell Technologies, sure. VMware, the relationships. They got some muscle within Dell, but almost you don't want to put the wet blanket on the innovation sure. engine of Boomi. How do you guys operate that? Because you want to tap the internal, yep. build that, make that a, a you know, feed into growth, same time be nimble and fast like a startup and grow. Yeah, well, well this was like, this is the unique opportunity that I've had, right? I led the strategy that ultimately led to the acquisition of Boomi, led the due diligence and then rolled out and was part of the leadership team eight years ago. Eight years ago to the day, yesterday was the, was the anniversary. And um, part of the design point of the, of the acquisition though, part of the selling point to Michael and his leadership team at the time was incubate Boomi. Don't, to, please, Dell, let's don't try to integrate it. Don't force it too early. No, let's, let's leverage the power of Dell where we can, particularly from a go-to-market perspective and a branding perspective, but in terms of truly integrating, when you think about integration in terms of M&A, that wasn't the playbook that we ran. In fact, my job as kind of the chief integration officer at the time was to really protect versus integrate. Um, and I would argue that that's kind of carried on eight years later, um, and Chris McNabb and, and the team have, you know, Chris has built an incredible culture at Boomi, and it's, it's probably the first thing that we talk about at every leadership meeting, which is, is we're trying to grow heads, you know, and grow team members and grow boomers 40, 50, 60% year over year in terms of our hiring, the one thing that we cannot relax on is that culture. And, and Chris has infused that in us. Michael's absolutely an incredible So strategic from day one. Absolutely. You know that cloud's around the corner, but still yes. you're, or you know you're early, so you probably got a good price on the deal anyway. But you say, okay, cloud native, <laughs> you got VM where you got Pivotal. Yep. It's maturing in real time every day. Yeah. So you guys had a plan from day one to be strategic that way. Not we, jam the revenue up and try to get the no, numbers up. And I would say even today, I think we're absolutely, um, we think there's incredible opportunities with partnerships with obviously Dell Technologies, but with Pivotal, with VirtuStream, with potentially VMware. I think you'll continue to see us announce things and explore those, yeah. but Michael, you know, he holds Chris and ultimately the Boomi team, you know, accountable to our P&L. We have to go meet our numbers, yeah. um, and, and, and there is no forcing of partnerships. It's like where it makes sense, and there absolutely are things where there's logical synergies. Well now synergies. you're on the inflection point, you got to grow the business. Exactly. But the data is still going to be, that could be the next kick up. You don't know where you are on the inflection point, I'd imagine, right? Are you down here, is it hockey sticking up? Or, because if the data comes home and you have a trust platform yep. for the data, that feeds into the apps. Absolutely. That feeds into the API 2.0 economy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I mean, yeah, it's a fair question. I don't know that we'll know until five years from now <laughs> where we are today in terms of that inflection point. I would say, um, you know, typically, you know, we're, we're actually seeing an acceleration in our space, right? Mm -hmm. Like, usually when you look at the Gardner, the Forrester stuff, the that I stared at eight years ago, you know, usually they're very aggressive on their expectations. Their expectations for iPass were actually lower than what we've seen. And mm -hmm. we're actually seeing even acceleration in the growth of the space. So we, yeah. we know that we have this opportunity I think with data and the ability to create this data fabric and really drive those business results and insights into our customers, I think that's what puts us somewhere on that inflection point. But I would argue that it's more like this today <laughs> than it is that, so, but, 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 but time will tell. So customers, the, the bread and butter, the reason yep. we're all here, right? 7,500 plus I mentioned in the beginning, five a day. You just today, Chris, recognized the, the first customer awards mm -hmm. um, for Boomi customers, and you had some really cool categories, change agent, 
emerging technologies innovator and ROI. Talk to us about the genesis of this customer awards program and how is that really kind of even internalized for the Boomi folks going, look at what we're enabling yes. so many different types of businesses to achieve. That's a great question. Um, I mean, you know, since I've been back, one thing that we try to instill in the sales cycle is really talking to customers, understanding what is the business value? What are you trying to get out of this? We're, we're typically an ingredient of a, of a, of a broader project. So, so how do we articulate what is that business value? What's the business outcome that you're trying to achieve? And, and I think today was a way for us to talk out loud and ultimately reward people that are leveraging technology. Boomi's part of that. But ultimately, what is the business value they're driving it? And in a profound way that's, that's, that's even amongst our 7,500 customers unique in some way across those different four categories. So, so that was really the genesis of, of the customer awards. Um, was trying to go find you know, those types of customers that, that were somewhere you know, much further along in their journey across one of those four pillars, but, but about their business outcomes, what they were trying to drive, whether it be you know, having a trading partner take six to 10 weeks down to three days, whether it be driving better customer experience yeah. within customers trying to seek out advertising with Charter and ultimately get them, but again, generating bottom line results and top line results. So, it's about the business outcome, the business result. Final question, I know we got a break, yeah, but I yeah. want to get you, I want to get it out on the record. What are you investing in? What are you doubling down on? Obviously, you're on a growth curve right now, yeah. so we can debate, look back where you are in the next couple of years, but certainly it's working. So where are you doubling down on? Where's your key investment areas as you look at the next you know, years, 24 months out, what's going, yeah. down, what's going down? How do you operate in the business? Yeah, maybe I'll highlight three things. I think first and foremost, it's, it's our product. And I think you'll hear from Steve Wood tomorrow. So I'm going to, not just me when you ask me that question, I'm going to talk about Boomi's investment priorities. So first and foremost, the product. I think you'll see tomorrow, we started, I mean, look, Three years ago, we, we kind of did the separation from, from Dell Technologies where we're 100% owned, but, but in that is like, in terms of the profound impact and investment in the business, that's where we started this journey. But, but in terms of the next 12 to 18 months, I'd tell you the product, and, and you'll start to see that tomorrow and how it's manifested itself, um, and where we're heading in the next 12 to 18 months. I tell you, our, our go-to-market activity, um, and there it's, it's, it's continuing to build out those global capabilities, it's continuing to really hone and focus our partner capabilities, and it's also figuring out how to leverage Dell Technologies and really drive that, particularly you know, to help bring us into those opportunities as we scale and continue to grow. And then I think the third is our customer success equation that I talked about this morning. Chris has been incredible. I genuinely mean it. Success is a boomy wide initiative. We're only as good as our customers experience today and we invest in that every single day and that's been a profound investment area that we'll continue to ramp up to, to really plow down on that success equation that we talked about. Well Chris, thanks so much for joining John and me on the program. COO, Chief Customer Officer, and dare I also add Chief Listening Officer. I've heard a lot about your listening I, I like to that. I the like customers that a lot. I like that as a lot. well as so, employees. Thanks so yeah. much for your time, Thank Chris. Thank you so much. I'm Lisa Martin with John Furrier. You're watching theCUBE live from Boomi World 2018 in Las Vegas. John and I will be right back with our next guest.